Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today I'm going to be talking about SAS. And what SAS is, is it's a uh, really interesting extension of CSS3, and it adds all sorts of cool features to CSS3 that uh, will really make your life a little bit easier um, in all sorts of ways. Uh, so some of the stuff it adds is it adds variables, which are really important because um, let's say you want to give this color blue and you're using it all over your site um, and then at the last second somebody changes that and so you have to go in all of the places uh, that you have declared that color of blue and change them by hand. What's great by, about SAS is you can um, have a variable blue and assign it to whatever value you would like and then um, you can go and use that all over on your CSS document and then if you need to change it you only have to change it in one spot. There's also some really great uh, functions that go along with variables that we're going to get into in the variables tutorial. Um, there's also nesting, which saves you a ton of time. So instead of having to write CSS uh, long out like you would here, you can nest things inside of other things, and it saves you a ton of typing and just a ton of time overall. Uh, mixins are sort of like variables, but with uh, larger groups of CSS. You can use mixins to declare you know, a whole group of things and then and then add it to something later, uh, basically allowing you to reuse code in all sorts of ways and changing it with variables. It's really powerful. Um, it's very exciting. Um, there's also selector inheritance. So uh, it allows you to, you know, reuse CSS properties without duplicating them. It's, it's, it's very powerful as well. You know, SAS is just a all-around great tool to use, and I found it really... Um, you know, helping, you know, write CSS really quickly, and uh, it's just really, really great. Okay, so to have to install SAS, you need to install Ruby Gems. Um, I'm not going to go over installing Ruby Gems in this tutorial. I'll, you know, I'll make a separate video for that if needed. Um, if you don't have Ruby Gems installed, I uh, you can go to rubygems.org and then uh, follow the download and installation instructions here. And this will uh, install RubyGems. If you want to check to see if you have RubyGems installed, open up your terminal and type gem and then hyphen v. And it will give you a version if you have gems installed. If not, it will say uh, command gem not found. So I have gems installed. I want to install SAS. Because I know that uh, I don't have admin privileges in this account, I'm going to have to sudo, uh, or else, you know, I'd get an error saying I don't have the privileges to install this. So, um, as you can see at the top of sas-lang.com, it just says gem install sas. We're going to do sudo gem install sas. It's going to ask for my password. Give it that. Take a second here, and okay, it's going to say successfully installed SAS 3.1.414, and then uh, it's going to go through and install some documentation. This will just take a second. It, uh, it might take a little bit longer on yours. I've actually already installed SAS on this computer, so um, I'm not exactly sure the time difference. Um, however, it shouldn't take that long, and as long as you don't see an error, it should be fine. All right, so this is done. We want to make sure that SAS installed, so we'll do SAS dash v it's going to say you have sas 3.1.14 granny betty which is the latest release okay so now i'm going to show you how to use sas in its most basic we're not going to get into any css right now um, but i will show you uh, how to get sas running so we're going to change into my desktop um, and if you notice, I have a file that's style.scss. And what this is, is it's just a blank document that's style.scss. So when you are writing your SAS, the SCSS document is the one that you will be editing. And what SAS does is it converts it into a CSS file that your browser um, can read. So what we need uh, to tell uh, SAS to do is we need to tell it to watch that SCSS file. And any time that there's a change made, it needs to um, update the style.css. 
actually when you tell it to watch the first time it's going to create that uh, CSS file so I'm just gonna get rid of the one I have here already so um, if you notice at the top of sash-lang.com it gives you your command right here so we can do sass dash dash watch style dot scss so this is a file that you're watching uh, colon style dot css and this is the file that it's going to be changing it into so when we hit enter it's going to say sass is watching for changes press control c to stop and it says overwrite style dot css so you can see this file was just created on my desktop so in my style.scss file, I'm going to show you how when you save it, it updates automatically. So we're going to add just a basic class here. This is just normal CSS. We're going to do body, background, I'm going to give it a background of black, I'm typing, okay. So watch when we hit save. On this, it automatically says change detected to style.scss, overwrite style CSS. And now if we go to our CSS document, it'll say body, background, black. Of course, because we didn't have any actual sass, there's going to be no difference. But as you can see, it uh, successfully converted your SCSS file into a CSS file. So that's pretty much it for the first lesson. In the next ones, I'm going to be showing you some of sass's more powerful features, um, some of the great things you can do with variables, nesting, all sorts of stuff. Uh, thanks for watching. Again, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and see you in the next one. Bye.